This is unit number 5, Construction and Analysis of Profit and Loss Account. In the previous videos, we have already covered these all topics, Profit and Loss Account, Linkage between Profit and Loss and Balance Sheet, How to Measure Income, How to Prepare a Profit and Loss Account, Some Indirect Expenses, Methods of Depreciation, Form of Profit and Loss Account, Cost of Goods Sold, Methods of Inventory Valuation. In this video, we are going to complete the final three topics, Gross Profit, Operating Profit, and net profit let us jump to the topic before understanding the topics of gross profit operating profit and net profit we have to see the example presented in this book here in this example a sample profit and loss account is given sales total sales revenue is 255 rupees other income is 5 rupees therefore total sales revenue is 260 rupees cost of goods sold is or the purchase price of the goods, goods sold is 130 rupees therefore gross profit is 130 operating expenses personal expenses depreciation expense other expenses each is given here 49 11 28 total is 88 and operating profit is 130 minus 88 42 rupees from this interest expense if any capital is uh, brought by way of debt interest is to be paid on that one so interest expense of 12 rupees is there so after removing 12 rupees, it will be 30 rupees. 30 rupees will be the profit before profit before tax. Then taxes will be paid again. 12 rupees is given here. Therefore, net profit will be 18 rupees. Using this example, we will explain the three topics of gross profit, operating profit, and net profit. What is gross profit? As we have seen earlier, gross profit is obtained by subtracting the cost of the goods sold from the total sales revenue. That is the gross profit. Irrespective of the financing, every company will be having this gross profit. It is simply like output minus the input, output revenue minus the input cost. That is gross profit. What is operating expense? All those expenses which are necessary to run the business enterprise but which are not directly associated with the company's output or production or trading are usually termed as operating expenses. All those expenses, which means all those expenses which help in running the business which are not directly related to the output of the business and which help in supporting and running the business are called the operating expenses. They are concerned with providing administrative and general support to the business operation. It is the actual practice to segregate these costs as falling under two broad groups. So operating expenses can be treated in two ways. One is selling and distribution costs and the other is general administrative expenses. The latter the general, which means the general administrative expenses also covers personal expenses, staff related expenses like workman's compensation, other benefits like PF, gratuity, insurance and other costs. In the example which you have seen earlier, the personal expenses is 49 rupees. The breakup for this, the schedule for this personal expenses is given here. Salaries, wages and bonuses 37.81 rupees, house rent allowance 2.19, gratuity, contribution to provident fund contribution to employee state insurance workman and staff welfare expenses 5 rupees so all these are expenses to the company these are personal related administrative expenses okay the other expense is depreciation we have already seen a topic on this one uh, video is already made on this one you can watch depreciation is the amount of the asset which is utilized in the present accounting period for generating the expenses or the or simply in, or in other words the cost which is expired, cost of the asset, especially the fixed assets, which is expired in the present accounting period is called the depreciation. That is also an expense which has to be shown in the profit and loss account. So for different kinds of assets, what is the depreciation in this example is given here. 11 rupees is the total depreciation. It is, the breakup is given here. Other expenses like other miscellaneous expenses, these are normally related to the uh, running of the business, uh, which are helpful in running the businesses. like. Uh, rent, electricity expense, water charges, repairs to the buildings, other printing and stationery, furniture expense, training expenses, power and fuel expenses, royalties, director fees, auditor's fees, miscellaneous expenses. So different kinds of expenses are which are incurred in the daily running of the business. These are also to be shown in the profit and loss account under the head other expenses. Okay, now what is operating profit? Operating profit is from the gross profit, all these expenses are reduced and we will arrive at the operating profit. Operating profit is the net result obtained from operations after subtracting 
depreciation expense, personal related expense and other expenses from the gross profit. The amount is earned by the company irrespective of the method of financing. Whether the company has brought debt capital or equity capital, it, it, it doesn't matter. There will always be a gross operating profit. This is a measure of operational efficiency of the company and is usually referred to as operating profit before interest and taxes or EBITDA earnings before interest and taxes also dip, uh, interest and taxes uh, gross profit is also known as EBITDA earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization operating profit is called as EBITDA where depreciation is removed e earnings before interest tax and amortization so total sales minus cost of goods sold is gross profit from gross profit if expenses are removed that becomes operating profit if uh, depreciation is not included then becomes EBITDA EBITDA if depreciation is is uh, it is also reduced then it becomes EBITDA EBITDA interest expense so if the company brings in debt capital then it has to service the debt by way of paying regular installments of interest interest expenses arises out of management's decision to finance part of expenses from borrowed funds debt funds the level of interest expense represents the amount of risk the company is carrying in terms of fixed commitments okay there is always a risk involved if the debt capital is more okay so here the breakup of interest what interest is the comp the company is paying in the, in the present example is given here debentures it is paying 0.58 rupees fixed deposits 1.5 rupees loans from government 5 rupees term loans from banks or financial institutions 0.42 rupees cash packaging credit from banks and others total 4.5 rupees total 12 rupees is the interest that is being paid by the company in this example i doubt whether fixed deposits comes under uh, interest expense or not because fixed deposits generally banks will pay interest to the company so what kind of fixed deposits the example is showing here i am not sure debentures here means uh, debenture is a loan or a bond raised by the company given by the company to the others uh, which is not backed by any asset it is an unsecured loan issued by a company okay people who are investing in debentures they have to bear the risk okay there is no asset backing this debentures so by way of debentures company has raised some money and it is paying interest on the debentures of 0.58 rupees okay that is shown as an expense net profit before tax so after the expenses are removed if tax there is a tax to tax liability so before paying that tax and after removing all the expenses the net value of profit that is obtained is called profit before tax or ebt earnings before tax net profit before tax is surplus after meeting all expenses including interest meeting all expenses including interest means reducing this part also from the gross profit this is the profit that is available to the company as a result of both operating and financing performance right now income taxes the company has to pay income tax on the amount it has earned as a profit the amount of tax payable is not determined on the basis of the reported net profit in most cases generally accounting profit arrived at has to be reclassified and recomputed for determining the tax liability further the tax liability is determined only after the tax assessment is completed it, generally once the tax assessment is completed then the final tax liability will be decided so until then tax liability will, will be shown as an estimate will be shown as a provision in the in this account <clears throat> when the amount is actually actually determined later on then it is set off against this provision right next net profit so once the taxes are also removed from the profits then we will arrive at net profit after the tax this is the amount which is actually available for sharing with the shareholders as a dividends okay this amount could be either distributed as dividends to shareholders or retained in the business as retained earnings thereby increasing the owner's investment or equity in the business so this final amount is called as profit after tax or earnings after tax after subtracting dividends declared any surplus remaining is added to retained earnings that is reserves and surplus this is the link between the profit and loss account and the balance sheet so whatever profit is earned through revenues minus expenses that is taken to the reserves and surplus account which is shown in the balance sheet so the aim of this entire chapter is to establish a link between the 
profit and loss account and balance sheet by explaining different different items in the profit and loss account like cost of the goods total sales revenue cost of the goods sold gross profit and from gross profit reducing all the expenses and from the expenses reducing the tax and arriving at the net profit the reserves and surplus will be taken to the uh, balance sheet okay we have completed this uh, chapter construction and, anal and analysis of a uh, profit and loss account there is an activity here uh, we have to match raw material consumed consumed is an expense or a depreciation if uh, if the part of asset is expired that will be treated as depreciation raw material consumed means an expense interest received is an income or a no, uh, non operating revenue dividends received is a non operating revenue wages paid to workers is an administrative expense carriage on goods sold it is a uh, expenses relating to uh, distribution carriages on goods purchased this is also a distribution expense salary of clerical staff it is an expense administrative expense rent for office other miscellaneous expense or administrative expense power and fuel other miscellaneous expense selling agents commission advertising auditor these are all other expenses okay so likewise you can see this uh, uh, different different items it is very easy to understand this is the summary this is the end of the chapter in the next chapter in the next video we will be starting uh, block number 3 stay tuned until then and bye bye